Next.js, Astro, Remix and Gatsby. Four frameworks built on top of React. Okay, Astro, not really, but we get to that. And they get called meta frameworks. Not because of that dude, but because meta refers to a higher level of abstraction. So React is just the foundation and the framework consumes this foundation library to provide something more extended. And these frameworks are very different. And that's why I'm recording this video to compare these frameworks and help you figure out which of them suits best for you. So today we compare the community size, the setup, the structure, the basic principles. So things like routing, fetching, styling. And in the end, we wrap that all up. Look at the developer experience and the performance to see which framework solves which problems best. So as I already mentioned today, we compare Remix made by the React Router guys, then Astro, the kind of newer kit on the block, Gatsby, it's kind of the opposite, it's kind of the granny, and next year is the framework hosted by Vercel. And the chart here is already the first thing we are going to compare. It's the downloads of the NPM packages in the last two years. So here we see how big is the community size, how many people are actually using it. And we definitely see that Next.js is clearly the winner here in the last years. But if we take Next.js out of that, Remix is really the winner here of the other three frameworks. Astro is kind of growing since it's born and Gatsby is slowly losing here. And the information you see here is pretty valuable because a bigger community means it's easier to troubleshoot any problems and to find help out there. But looking at charts is not the only deal of the video, so let's get them running. So getting all these frameworks running is actually not that hard, it's just copy and pasting one line. So for next you go npx create next app at latest, for astro you do npm create astro at latest, for remix it's npx create remix at latest, and for Gatsby it's npm init Gatsby. That's it. Now you just ask a couple of questions. Often it's things like, do you want to use JavaScript or TypeScript? What type of name has your project? Go through that, it's pretty easy. And then with a snap, having all four apps running. Next.js at localhost 3000, Astro on localhost 4321, Remix on 5173, that's the default for Vita, and localhost 8000 for Gatsby. The pages you see here are the default starting pages. So now let's get into code. Let's look at the structure. So here we see the tree of every app right now and we see the structure is actually pretty the same. And that's cool about web development. So we always kind of have a public directory where we lay down images and assets in general. So here we have this public, here we have the public directory, here we have it, and here it's in the source, and then we have images, for example. And then we always have a folder that is either called source or app. So here in Remix, we have the app folder where all our code sits. Here we have the source folder. Here it's the source folder and here it's the source folder as well. So that's like the general structure. And then we have configuration files on the top levels. But when you look into the source folder, what you see is .tsx everywhere. You see it in Next here. You also can find it in Remix here, root.tsx, entry server.tsx. You can find it for Gatsby as well. If you go into the pages, then you have 404.tsx, index.tsx. But what is with Astro? Astro doesn't seem to have a TSX here. It's just dot Astro. What does that mean? And the thing here is that Astro is framework agnostic. That means that Astro is not tightly coupled to React. That's what I meant in the introduction of this video. You can just use multiple different components from different libraries into Astro. So a dot Astro file is basically just some HTML code and then you can use components inside of that. And that can be either React, Vue, Svelte, whatever. So now we understood the basic structure. So let's dive into the basic principles like routing or fetching. So fasten your seatbelts because we move fast here. And don't be confused here, this is not the basic setup app. The apps you're seeing here are more complex or example projects just to show you how things really work. So routing in Next.js is file-based. So you have your app directory and then you have, for example, folders like home, and if you put a page TSX in this folder, this folder gets a route. And then in next, you have some more file conventions like loading.tsx or layout.tsx, which have different purposes and act a little bit differently. And when it comes to data fetching and rendering strategies, Next.js gives you a lot of freedom because there's CSR, SSR, SSG, ISR, and PPR. So 
a lot of different strategies to probably opt into. So in general, a page is server-side rendered, so you can use the await keyboard to probably call some functions that is getting data. You can either use basic API routes, like in your app directory, you have an API folder and then you can use API routes, or you do it with server action, which is just the async function that's just running on the server. And actually at the end of the day, it's just an API endpoint. And that's how Next.js is basically working. And then we have Astro. Astro's routing is also file-based. So you go into source directory and the pages, and then you have file-based routing. So block gets a route. And then I can do dynamic routing. You see it here with the square brackets. That's also possible in Next.js, for example. And that's how the basic routing is working. But when it comes to the logic, Astro gets kind of different here. Because Astro focuses on zero JS. That means they want to ship zero JS to the client. Because what's making web apps slow? JavaScript. And that's what they want to avoid here. So in Astro, you have this island architecture and you can understand it like this. You have a big HTML ocean. That's like your static HTML, no dynamic things in there. And then you have small islands with interactivity or some kind of dynamic functionality. And the primary goal here is to have most of your content statically available because that's what makes it pretty, pretty fast. And when we look into the code, we also can do top level await, which is great. And then you have those three line symbols here. I think they're called hyphens. And inside of these, you can fetch your data and this one's at build time and then you can direct that to your components to render it when this is going to be accessed and the next framework is remix and remix as you can already see is also doing the routes at a file based level and you can do dynamic routes not with those square brackets but instead with a dollar sign here and then if we take a look into it you kind of always have this loader function to fetch data and this loader function gets called at the top of your component and basically said remix is just just using SSR. There's no fancy things like ISR or PPR or SSG, I think, that you have in other frameworks like Next, for example. Remix is basically focused on fetching dynamic data. And the special thing about Remix is a feature called nested routes. We can see that on their homepage, for example, if we scroll down here, we see that already. There's actually a connection between UI and route. Sales is one part of the UI, invoices is another part inside of that, and the invoice itself is again just a part inside of that and last but not least we have Gatsby and Gatsby of course is also file-based routing so you have your pages directory and you put your pages inside of that directory what's different about Gatsby is that you can create your routes at build time even dynamically with the Gatsby node TS so here you can for example fetch all your products so Gatsby is really also focused on static site generation and you can fetch all those things at build time and then you can create those pages with the create page function coming from the internal actions here. Looking at the code at Gatsby, it's quite familiar because it's React, you have use state, you have use effect and things are pretty straightforward here. All right, let's wrap that all up and see which framework you should use. So what about developer experience and performance, right? The thing with Next.js is that it has a great developer experience because there's a big community, there's a great documentation and you have a lot of possibilities. But with these possibilities comes a side effect. You actually never stop to learn because there's always a new breaking change you need to adapt to. So basically Next.js gives you a lot of possibilities, but it's easy to shoot yourself in the food. And then we have Astro. The cool thing about Astro is that everything feels kind of modern. The approach is nice because it's zero JS and zero JS makes your app pretty fast. But the downside is it's not suited for every use case because Astro is focused on static site generation. So if you have a highly dynamic web app with lots of different functionalities and all that, Astro might be not the right choice. But if you have a content heavy site, like a blog, for example, Astro is probably the fastest choice. And then with Remix, the great thing about Remix is that it's sticking to the web fundamentals. So if you learn programming at a university at a very theoretical level, you will be happy with Remix because they really stick to those fundamentals. The downside is that Remix is just SSR. So it's just good if you have a big web page where your content needs to be dynamic and not static. Then you can go with Remix, but be aware that the community is smaller than the community of Next, for example. And then we have Gatsby. And what I actually forgot to mention about Gatsby is that it's using GraphQL. And GraphQL is good, but in some way it's not. It's kind of better because you are not doing things like overfetching. You're basically just fetching what you really need. But REST is just easier and it tends to be more used in the future. And in Gatsby, you have a big plugin system. And in some kind of way, I don't know if this is 
a positive thing or a negative thing. It's okay because you have plugins for everything. So that's on the pro side. But on the con side, it's annoying to always search for a plugin to do some server-side rendering or stuff like that. So that's why I have on the con side, it feels old. Gatsby is the oldest of all those frameworks and probably not the right solution for you if you're starting today. Okay, yeah, that was the comparison. Thank you for watching this video. Watch my last video here and have a great week.